he would have never thought he would die this early in his career. His name was Wen Yu. He was a fourth-grade warrior on his first mission with his new squad. Too bad they decided he was cannon fodder. His first assignment turned out to be a suicide mission. The main battle team used the newbies to bait out fifth-grade mutant beasts. And they had no remorse for their actions. Wen Yu couldn't believe his luck. He expected to accomplish more in his career as a warrior, not to be tossed to the side like trash. He put everything he had into his final stand, but it just wasn't enough. His death was assured and there was nothing he could do about it. When you shot straight up in bed, confused by the turn of events. Why was heaven his pre-doomsday room? Or maybe this was hell? His bedside clock read May 25th, 2117. That date was at least a year before his eventual demise. He wondered whether he was being given a second chance. Had he really gone back in time? His cell phone had been annoyingly buzzing this whole time. His job was offering him overtime hours if he could make it in on his off day. There was no doubt about it, this really was pre-doomsday. Why was he being given the chance to redo his failures? He decided not to look the gift horse in the mouth. Instead, he would take this chance by the horns. This time around, he would be in charge. He wouldn't be used as someone's distraction. He would blaze a trail into the future. He decided to start his preparations immediately. If the outbreak hadn't happened, it would be happening soon. If he started immediately, things would be different. The experience gap between him and the others would be drastic. He had to reinforce that. He could hear his mother's screams from the other room. This was the very day it all began. His mom and dad had both become zombies within the first few hours of the outbreak. A zombie is a creature that has lost consciousness due to the corruption of the body by magical energy. Its strength and speed are slightly inferior to human beings. Its weakness is its magical core. It was a good thing he was planning a retreat out of the city. But this time around, he knew exactly how to use this knife. Each zombie's magical core was located in a different location. With his current knowledge, he could do more this time than just run away. He dashed forward, killing the zombie in a single blow. One grade zero zombie killed, obtained one point. He was stoked. This time around, things were indeed the same. In his previous life, the system messages were a shock that took everyone a while to get used to. In the aftermath of the chaos, the world burnt. All forms of currency became worthless and law and order slipped away from humanity. A new system of bartering became the standard. A magical pillar known as the Exchange Stone allowed one to exchange points for goods and services. You obtain points by killing zombies and mutated beasts. The pillars were the most prominent way for a normal human to obtain a class. If you had one of the big three jobs, you were instantly twice as strong as a normal human. But the rare and hidden classes are where the true power resided. This time around, he wouldn't sit around at home, missing the crucial opportunity to become strong early in the outbreak. The closest pillar was at the entrance to his neighborhood. His plan was to kill zombies as he traveled. Upon his arrival, he should have accumulated enough to become a grade one warrior. There were quite a few zombies in his presence, he charged in, taking it as a challenge. Obtained one point. After his first kill, a second zombie snuck up on him. He attacked it with his elbow, instantly realizing his mistake. A normal human body couldn't take such damage. He would need to become a warrior immediately if he expected to survive. He pushed forward to accumulate the nice collection of points headed his way. As he cleared the room, he knew this would have been impossible in his previous life. But he had obtained the ten points he needed. It was time for him to head out. Luck was not on his side today. On the other side of the carnage, a mutated beast headed his way. The neighborhood stray was not the same friendly pup anymore. He had to run. His current level wasn't high enough to deal with such a challenge. In his panic, he chose the wrong direction, allowing the mutant to get a hold of his leg. The mutant dog slung him into the convenience store, causing glass shards to dig deeply into his body. He had no time to rest. His pursuer was relentless. It had eyes for him and him alone. 
when you could not waste the opportunity handed to him on a silver platter by dying. As the mutant attacked, he made a beeline for the streets. He could sense that the undercurrent of the current battle had changed. He wondered why the mutant wasn't attacking. What exactly had changed? He knew he could figure this out. The mutant was guarding the convenience store. He looked up, noticing the treasure trove right in front of his eyes. How could he be so blind? A treasure trove was an extremely rare existence in his past life. And no one had ever been able to figure out a pattern to their appearance. Or what determined how long they stay open. But as long as you enter one, it was assured that you would exit with the treasure of a much higher grade than you could attain anywhere else. The earlier you entered the more rare and powerful the items you received were. He figured the mutant must have found this treasure trove early on. Too bad it was wasting its time. Only humans were able to enter them. No matter what it does, it will never attain anything from it. The mutant became vicious at the realization that its prey was interested in his treasure. When you had no other choice but to fight, the treasure trove was worth all sacrifices. The mutant tilted his head, dodging when you's attack, and clamped down squarely on his forearm. When you would use this opportunity to kill his enemy, but before he could manage a counterattack, his arm was ripped from his body. He put distance between the two of them and reminded himself to stay calm. Losing the arm was not a big deal. As long as he leveled up, his disability would be repaired. He had to get into the treasure trove and he had to do it immediately. As his enemy attacked, he prepared his last-ditch effort. He charged forward as the mutant reached its pinnacle. He believed it had worked until something pulled at his leg. His easiest option was to surrender the leg and make it into the trove. And he did exactly that. The trove sucked him in and deposited him into a room covered in circuits. He had literally given up an arm and a leg for this treasure. It better be worth it. The trove did not disappoint. Inside the wooden box was a purple hidden job change scroll. This particular reward was top tier. It was exactly what he needed. While hidden classes weren't necessarily stronger than the big three, their basic skills typically exceeded anything you could buy from the exchange pillar. He wasted no time activating it, his missing body parts rematerializing before his eyes. Congratulations on successfully changing classes. Your class has become Soul Master. Not only did a class change automatically heal all injuries, it would also grant an instant skill or talent. The basic skills of the big three typically was F rank. He hoped desperately that this pattern didn't apply to hidden classes. The host is currently a first grade soul master and has two basic physical attributes. Acquired class exclusive skill, soul realm. Neither your rank nor exclusive skill can be forgotten or replaced. Soul realm, the living space of your soul pets. For every level of the soul master, a new soul realm will be unlocked. The whole set successfully changed his class and will automatically attain the Soul Master's original path. This contract cannot be cancelled. It automatically occupies the host's first Soul Realm. Current Soul Beast Attributes 2. Skill 1 Soul Strike, S Rank Passive Skill Combat Type Magazine Every attack of the Soul Master will cause damage to the enemy's soul. This damage effect depends on the difference between the enemy's and the host's attributes. The effect will be lost if the enemy's attribute is 10 times greater than the host. When Yu's new pet swooped and dived around his head. Skill 2. Soul Pet Blessing. No rank. The soul beast can merge with the soul master, and the attributes of the beast will be added on to the basic attributes of the soul master. Skills of the soul beasts will be unusable. In this state, all released soul beasts cannot be returned to the soul realm, and soul pets in the soul state cannot be released. Each soul pet existing in the soul realm can add a skill to the soul master. He wasted no time trying this out. Soul beast merge. Battle form activated. Current host attributes. Name. When you. Race. Human. Class. Soul master. Grade. First grade. Skill. Soul Realm. First Soul Pet. Original Soul Pet. Attributes. 2. 
This was incredible. In his battle form, he truly exceeded the other classes. In the later stages, he would be unstoppable. In his past life, he had never run across any information that even alluded to hidden classes being so powerful. He wondered how far this new class would take him in his new life. The mutant dog was in for quite the surprise. As he exited the treasure trove, his old friend was in a fearsome mood. This time around, things were going to be different. He had to show the mutant dog some appreciation. If it wasn't for him, he would not have run across the treasure trove. He decided he would send him to hell in the quickest way possible. This time, he met the dog's attack head-on. Even though he repelled him, this dog was way stronger than he had originally perceived. He hoped his battle form would give him the edge he needed. As power swirled around Win Yu, he knew this was it. This mutt was done for. He activated his skill soul strike as he kicked it dead in the head. That was all it took to put the mutant dog down. For his first skill to be S rank, who knew how powerful he would be as he progressed farther through the ranks. The only problem was the mutant dog wasn't down for the count. This beast was special indeed, for he refused to surrender to fate. This forced an S rank skill to appear. Skill Awakening Life Bite S rank, Wilder will have a significant decrease in pain perception. As the injury worsens, basic physical fitness will increase exponentially with no upper limit. It having an S rank skill at level 1 was not a good sign for Win Yu. It meant the dog had unlimited growth potential. He needed to get out of there immediately. He jumped backward and made a break for the back door, pulling the store shelves down as he went. Everything came crashing down, sealing his escape route as he leaped for freedom. The mutated dog was determined, but today wasn't his day. Their battle would have to end in a draw, when you wasn't interested in tussling with such a foe. He couldn't comprehend why in his previous life he had never run across any mention of such a creature. Gaining strength as one became injured would surely allow the creature to become a dominating force in this world. He put it out of his mind as there were more important things he needed to put his energy into. The mystery of such an amazing creature will have to wait for another day. A large treasure trove in Jiangbin Park would open soon, and he had to prepare for it. The treasure trove contained a rare skill known as the Black Book. There was no chance he would miss such an opportunity. He would need to make a trip to the exchange pillar to stock up on supplies. The sight that awaited him was unimaginable. A horde of zombies gathered around the plaza, exactly where the exchange pillar would be located. A crowd like this explained why so many died in the early days of the doomsday. At the moment, there was no way for him to know if any of the other exchange pillars were any better. He would take his chance with this one. Even if it meant he had to kill every single zombie here. When you wasted no time dismantling the zombies one after another. Nothing would stop him in this life. That included a horde of trash zombies. Just die! In an instant there was nothing left but him and the pillar. Welcome to the exchange system. Please select the items you wish to exchange. He was disappointed. He had always assumed that the good items were snatched up at the start of the doomsday. But there was nothing but the same old trash. Exactly how it always was. First, he would need healing items. He had taken a few scratches from that beast and needed to top himself off. Access to items was plentiful, but the prices were astronomical. He would have to settle for something more in his price range. The rate of recovery always surprised him with these items. The best thing for his growth was magic crystals. Lucky for him, the cheap ones would work just fine for his hidden class. Level 1-0 attribute magical crystals can be used to evolve the physical qualities of people in the first grade. During the enhancement process, the skills that appear were very dependent on the proportion of magical crystals used. If you use only non-attribute magical crystals to enhance, five of the most garbage skills will appear. Since his class had unique skills, none of that applied to Win Yu. He crushed the crystal and soaked in its magical power, relishing the feeling. With that single crystal, his physical qualities had improved by about 0.5 times. Once he had an appropriate weapon, the zombies were in trouble. Needing more adequate points forced him to scavenge for appropriate supplies. 
The hardware store was the perfect place to find the tools needed to dismantle zombies. A chainsaw and axe would do for the time being. While his class soul master was indeed strong, it was lacking in a few areas. At his level, he was behind other classes in the skills department. Melee attacks were a no-go if he wasn't in his battle form, and losing access to his summons while in battle form wasn't worth it. When you needed to find a more lethal weapon to make up for his weakness. For now, his body would be strong enough, so the next magic crystals he received would go to his soul pet, ensuring his chance of survival. Help! Someone calling for help meant zombies, and zombies meant points. The brother and sister were being attacked by way too many zombies. Their chance of survival was as low as it could get. This scene totally reminds me of the ads you see for zombie survival mobile games. His sister was in a total panic, as her brother, he had to step up. He was going to force open a path of escape. He assured her that both of them would make it out safely. She begged him not to go. He rushed in with a short pipe and as suspected, a zombie attacked him from behind. He crashed against the wall. His future as a zombie was almost assured. His sister rushed to his side, tripping and exposing her back to the zombies. And just as she was about to join zombie kind, an axe flew in, smashing its head. When you informed her that rule one was most definitely to never show your back to a zombie, their hero had killed the zombie in one strike. And within moments, he had cleared the room. He snapped them out of their days. All of them had to get out now. A hero had appeared and saved their lives. The two followed his orders as he led them to safety. The way he moved was unbelievable. The two sat back and watched him destroy the zombies with ease. When you had guided the two to safety, the coast was clear, but they should limit where they wandered. They thanked him and he advised them to be more careful in the future. They wanted to know where he was headed and he informed them that he was on the lookout for weapons. The sister screamed that she knew exactly where he could attain them. The police station on San Howie Road had exactly what he needed. They had escaped from that location and it was completely surrounded by zombies. Zombies was all he needed to hear. He departed, shouting thank you as he left. He knew exactly where that police station was and hoped that the number of zombies would meet his expectation. As he neared the location a number of bodies went flying right in front of his eyes. The place was covered in giant mutant rats. He wondered what exactly was going on at this police station. He shimmied up the closest pole to obtain a better viewpoint. What he saw astounded him. The rats and the zombies were in the middle of a massive battle. He knew there had to be people locked in the police station for this to be occurring. His recent luck seemed to be far from ceasing. The rats preoccupying the zombies meant points would be falling into his lap. He leapt off the roof, not able to stand the anticipation. The police station was in a dire situation. The captain was grieving over the loss of his daughter. Any second now, they would be breached by a horde of zombies. If things continue as they were, this station was going to be all of their graves. By the look in the police chief's eye, he had found the new purpose in life. He was going to get revenge for his daughter's murder. And he would go through all those zombies alone if he had to. At that moment, their barricades failed and the zombies rushed in. There was too many zombies. At this rate, his revenge was slipping away. And worse than that, his body had froze up. His death was only moments away. An axe flew into the station, saving his life. Outside, what they believed to be a person was going berserk. The system message, you have killed the level 1 zombie. You have gained 1 point. Repeated over and over as when you was having a field day. He was high on killing. He had already obtained over 1,000 points. His appearance frightened everyone inside. The police chief was amazed. This guy was doing exactly as he pleased with the zombies. The other officers knew it was time to escape and they were not interested in missing this window of opportunity. The chief eagerly introduced himself, but was cut off mid-sentence. When you wanted to know why he hadn't taken the opportunity to escape, he cut straight to the chase. Those mutated rats had killed his daughter, and he wouldn't rest until all of them were dead. In order to accomplish that, he knew he needed help from this stranger. 
There was no way the two of them would be able to accomplish such a goal. When you hated disappointing a father in such a situation, the police chief informed him he had a plan that would get the job done. He explained that originally there were only mutated rats in the police station. He had been slowly luring the zombies there in hopes the two would eliminate each other. But to his surprise, not only did the rats not decrease, they became stronger. His plan had completely backfired. All he did was feed the rats' experience. But having a strong stranger in his presence had kindled a new idea. He had access to explosives. He was going to march into the rat's den and light it up. His only problem was once he was gone, he needed someone to clean up any stragglers that his explosives didn't take care of. When you knew he was dealing with a person who wasn't all there anymore, the chief went over the plan one more time. He was going to rush in and set off the explosives. If everything went successfully when you would clean up anything that was left. But if the explosives didn't go off, he should just abandon this place and forget it ever happened. Is avenging her death truly worth everything? You've only seen the lackeys. The main rat is intelligent. He maliciously killed my daughter right in front of me. The chief was ready to lay it all on the line to accomplish his goals. He tucked his explosives under his arm and shouted for little bro to clear the way. And when you did just that in a spectacular fashion, he would do all he could to buy the chief as much time as he needed. When you had never met a truer man worthy of his aid, the chief rammed his way through the door. All that was left for him to do was to light the explosives, and him and his enemies would be gone from this world. Rat King, Level 2 Mutated Being The smaller rats outside weren't the only ones who had flourished at the presence of zombies. If only he hadn't sent his daughter off to play in the office, she would still be here right now. But she was gone, and her murderer was soon to follow. When you had retreated to safety, but something was wrong. The explosives hadn't gone off and all the rats were rushing to aid their boss. But without fail, the show was a little late, but spectacular all the same. The chief had done it. Now when you would keep his part of the deal, he would do his best to honor such a super cool old man. The explosives turned out to be everything the chief promised. There wasn't much in the way of stragglers. The plan had worked entirely too well. But there was a silver lining. The police station was littered with magical crystals. Primarily beast types, but there were a few surprises. His pet collected on the promised feast. The magical crystals would catapult him down his path to greatness. He owed a great debt to a man that wasn't here any longer. There was movement coming from inside the rubble. He rushed over. He would be sure nothing survived. He was sure he sensed movement, but so far there was nothing but rubble and fire. The king rat surged forward. He and the chief had both survived thanks to the lackeys, piling in to protect their king. Luckily, they were in terrible shape. When you wouldn't have much problem taking out a half-dead second-grade mutated rat. The chief was desperate to have his daughter's murderer slain. He begged little bro to finish the job. And to do it in a hurry. The mutated beast made a bad choice. Instead of retreating it attacked. When you counter the attack with his first S-rank skill, Soul Strike, he reassured himself that all would be well as laser beams shot from both his eyes. The attack seemed to come directly from his soul. After the incident with the mutated dog, he felt it best to finish this with an axe blow to the head. Second grade mutated rat has been killed. Obtained 153 points. The chief sent a silent greeting up to his daughter in heaven. He had avenged her so she should have no problem resting in peace. When you felt honored that he was able to aid with such a task, he tossed a handful of magical crystals to the chief. Since he had survived, half was rightfully his. When you assured the chief that he was only able to obtain them because of his actions. When you said his goodbyes and got back to the task at hand. But as always, people wanted to know where he was going. His destination was Jiangbin Park. The park was a hotbed of zombie activity. While he waited for the show to start, he checked to see how much he had progressed from his recent battles. Let's skip right to the important details this time. Both his personal grade and his class level were at their peak. 
He had 20 attributes and exactly 1,153 points. There, that was much better. When you was shocked that he would be progressing to second grade so soon. With the amount of progress he had attained, he should have no problems with whatever the treasure troves would throw at him. He had meticulously timed his arrival at the park to coincide with the opening of the trove. A great beast from his other life decided to make an appearance. Simba was a force to be reckoned with. He had a passion for killing zombies. And if humans strayed too close, he would fry them also. When you didn't understand why such a creature was in a place like this. In his previous life, Simba was a major catastrophe. He made an entire city his domain and ruled it with an iron fist. No monster could stand in his presence. If this is Simba's origin location, he must have destroyed everyone in the vicinity. When you would have to be careful if he wished not to attract Simba's attention. If he wanted to survive in such a place, he would need to get stronger. When you headed in the opposite direction to kill zombies while he waited for the treasure trove. A group of four brothers made their way into the park. Simba had been a barrier to their entry, but now that he was preoccupied with the zombies, they could head to their target location. Some of the brothers were reluctant to head into such a dangerous location. But the older brother insisted that with danger came treasure, and he knew for a fact that there was treasure here. Early in the outbreak, the group had been separated. During this time, the eldest brother had come across a silver vortex. Inside, he found a broken box with a map and a glowing pendant. It had to be a treasure map. There were no other answers for it. While showing the pendant to his brothers, it floated away. A giant vortex appeared in the air. To think a pendant would unlock such a trove. When you put his zombie grinding on hold as the treasure trove had finally appeared. He had to do his best to not attract the attention of Simba. If he could do that, entering the treasure trove would be no problem. Wanyu's path was discreet, but he made it there in one piece. The treasure trove turned out to be a first grade large trove. He leaped in, wondering exactly what type of trove awaited him. Hopefully while inside Wanyu gained strength. Because upon his exit, he would need it. Welcome to the first grade large treasure trove. This trove would definitely be filled to the brim with treasure. To his surprise, it seemed he had competition. The brothers soon noticed him. Luckily, their group possessed cooler heads because some among them would have resorted to violence instead of using diplomacy. The eldest brother insisted on gaining intel on their enemy first. If he ended up being weak, they could always kill him at a later time. The brother introduced himself and reassured Wenyu that he had nothing to fear from them. When you approached the brothers with little concern for his safety, for violence was prohibited between humans in a treasure trove such as this. If it wasn't for such a rule, they wouldn't have had the opportunity to debate his safety. Because of their hostile intent towards him, if they received anything good, the chance of them living long enough to use them were slim to none. The trove presented the rules to everyone. Attacking each other is not allowed in the treasure trove. Those who break this rule will be expelled from the treasure trove. Survivors can enter the challenge arena through stone pillars. The challenge increases in difficulty level by level. Please note that once the challenge begins, you can only choose to exit after each stage is over. Challengers are advised to attempt according to their abilities. Those who pass the highest difficulty will receive the ultimate treasure in the treasure trove. Then the treasure trove will close permanently. Ultimate treasure was exactly what when you came for. Things were starting to get interesting. Hey, first come first serve, I'll be the first challenger. Level 1, Normal Zombies. There were different types of treasure troves. The good ones were friendly with bountiful rewards. Then there were the evil ones that always put you in dangerous situations. But the evil ones couldn't hold the candle to the extreme ones. Those always ended in a massacre. The aggressive brother wasted no time with the first round zombies. And by the looks of it, this treasure trove was most definitely friendly. This meant that the difficulty of this treasure trove would be concentrated in its final level. First level challenge successful. Rewarded with the F rank steel sword. Would you like to challenge the next level? The difficulty rose. Three zombies attacked the brother at the same time. 
With a single swift strike, he dispatched all three. Second level challenge successful. Rewarded with an F-rank protected suit, would you like to challenge the next level? When you knew the brothers wouldn't be smiling for too much longer. The difficulty level should be ramping up right about now. He tried to warn them, even though he knew they wouldn't listen to a stranger that had a high chance of being their enemy. A large zombie with four attributes dropped into the arena. This particular challenge turned out to not be a cakewalk like the others. The zombie wasted no time slamming the brother into the ground. Luckily, he had the sense to surrender, as he was no match for his foe. When you decided it was time to show these amateurs how it was done, the eldest brother figured this was the perfect opportunity to learn from someone else's mistakes. When you had no problem with this, he warned them not to get shocked by his skills. The aggressive brother couldn't wait to catch this faker outside. The eldest brother reminded him to be patient. This was the perfect opportunity for them to see exactly how they would proceed in the future. With that mouth on him, if he turns out to be weak, there's no way he could blame us when we decide to kill him and take his treasure. First level challenge successful. Rewarded with an F-rank steel sword. Would you like to challenge the next level? When you simply said, continue. The second level likewise posed no challenge. Second level challenge successful. Rewarded with an F-rank protective suit. Would you like to challenge the next level? Yeah. The large zombie with four attributes attacked when you. All eyes were focused on this particular battle. When you made it look easy, dealing with the zombie as if it was nothing special. After all, this was just an appetizer for the main course. Third level challenge successful. Rewarded with a bottle of beginner healing potion. If the brothers were smart, they would have taken the opportunity to retreat from the treasure trove. Their enemy was strong and fast. None of them matched his prowess. They acted as if simply not robbing him would save them from what was coming in the future. When you wanted the next level immediately. The challenge had hyped him up and he was ready to do some more damage. The challenges progressively got more difficult. But his tedious preparations were paying off. Having 20 attributes made him feel sorry for the lower level challenge zombies. When you hoped he had trained enough to put up an adequate fight against the final boss. The fourth level challenge gave him two level one magic crystals. The fifth level challenge gave him an intermediate healing potion. He received an F rank protective jade from the sixth level challenge. He received a teleportation scroll from the seventh level. And the eighth level gave him an F rank storage ring. F rank protective jade can offset 100 attacks from level one creatures. 10 attacks from level 2 creatures, and 1 attack from a level 3 creature. Item consumed upon use. Teleportation scroll, able to instantly move to another place within a limited range. Item consumed upon use. F rank storage ring. Can store any item. These were exactly the type of rewards he was hoping for. Such items were lifesavers to someone at his level. The brothers were truly worried. Their enemy had to be cheating. There was no other way to explain it. That's when things took a drastic turn. Ninth level challenge starts. The treasure trove not asking his permission put him on edge. The fact that he was not being given a choice could only mean one thing. Danger. And the treasure trove didn't disappoint in this regard. A miniature demon gate appeared before his eyes. In his previous life, one 100 times larger had appeared and chaos ensued. How exactly do you know that this is a demon gate? When you desperately searched for the owner of the voice. Give up, there's no way you can find me. I'm the guardian of this treasure trove. Guardian was a term that he had never come across in his previous life. Judging by the other's demeanor, only he was able to hear the guardian. Seeing that you know what a demon gate is, you know exactly what's coming. Yes, one of those is sealed behind this door. I estimate with your current power level, you have a 10% chance of passing this challenge. When you was shocked. How was that fair? Defeating this guy is your only path to treasure. Do your best, Teehee. Fear was the only emotion when you could muster. The boss was an ancient demon. How could the leader of the demons be in this treasure trove? 
I'll make things fairer, like you wanted. First, this demon is only first grade. But he possesses well over 20 attributes. To round it off, he has an SS rank skill. I recommend you avoid it at all costs. It will dissolve you within 10 seconds of you coming in contact with it. That's all the help I can give you. I think that was more than fair. He's coming, so you better get ready. The demon wasted no time and immediately attacked when you. Its first attack was like a missile hitting the ground exactly where he stood. If he didn't dodge all of its attacks, he was done for. It wasted no time taking this battle to the next level. SS ranked extinction activated. He had no chance against such a skill. He would have to bide his time until it wore off. The ancient demon roared as red electricity arched across his body. Without his combat experience from his previous life, he would already be dead. Each of the demon's attacks carried a wave of red sparks. To think someone took the time to design this arena to give this enemy an advantage. This truly was an impossible challenge. He had at least six seconds left before he could go on the offensive. He cast Soul Strike but nothing happened. There was only one explanation for this. The demon had no soul. The guardian explained that the demon had had his consciousness removed. So good luck with that. Oh yeah, there's only a 30 minute cooldown on that ability. So good luck, time is ticking. The guardian's distraction caused him to miscalculate, taking a direct hit to his core. When you was sent flying, the protective jade in his pocket sparked. He slammed into a sparkling blue barrier, preventing him from exiting the arena. He had managed to avoid the SS rank skill, but the demon's pure strength would destroy him if he took too many more of those hits. He will be a goner if it wasn't for the protective jade. It was down to only nine charges left. With its OP skill on cooldown, the battle could finally begin. A head-to-head -head battle ensued. When you lost a charge on his protective jade each time he took a blow. His strategy was simple. The demon had high defense, so he would focus his attacks on a single location. Using this technique, eventually he would break through. When Yu's protective jade was depleting at an alarming rate. If he took too many more hits, he would truly be in trouble. A crack appeared in the demon's defense. When you wasted no time exploiting this opportunity, he screamed, Die! as he launched forward for his final attack. He took a blow to the stomach that sent blood splashing from his mouth. But his attack was true, and the demon was destroyed. The guardian was truly impressed. As a reward, he shined down a healing light to heal Winu's wounds. He walked from behind the curtain to introduce himself. He was intrigued. A challenger defeated his treasure trove within an hour of its existence. When you was shocked by the little guy that emerged, you're the one who was talking this whole time? What of it? This is my domain. I can do whatever I want. But I like you, so I figured we should have a chat. My name is Alcada, and I'm the guardian of the 195th treasure trove. According to your human traditions, you can just call me Big Brother. So you're a guardian? And treasure troves are protected by guardians. Only high-ranked or large treasure troves have guardians. If I didn't find you interesting, you would never know about us. Our regulations specifically state that guardians aren't allowed to directly interact with survivors while on duty. There's regulations for guardians? Who created them? Who else other than the omnipotent master of the world? And who's the master? You have either the strength or the authority to continue down that path of questioning. It's probably best we change the topic. Okay. One last question. What exactly is happening to the world? Why did the class system appear? Where did the treasure troves and the magical creatures come from? Are you sure that was one question? I guess I shouldn't sweat the details. Anyway, it's better for you not to know the information too early. When you decided not to push his luck. After all, this guardian was in possession of his ultimate reward. He wasted no time asking the guardian to kindly hand him his rewards. The guardian figured that the young one was just anxious. So, he reached through a rip in reality and pulled the reward straight out. He handed Winyu a simple sheet of parchment. You're not going to tell me that's my reward. 
Human the content of this paper is the ultimate treasure. Unknown item detected identifying. Identification complete. Black book. Absorb souls and unleash the power of darkness. This book is the first chapter of the black book curse, so its ability is greatly weakened. Current ability. When enough soul power is absorbed, the spells recorded in the black book will take effect. The current effects are as follows. Suppressions. Reduces the speed of all surrounding creatures by 10%. Weakness. Reduces the power of all surrounding creatures by 10%. Damaged buff. Reduces the defense of all surrounding creatures. The effect duration is 10 minutes and affects 100 meters around the user. Curses ignore levels and spells that are triggered by the users themselves. When you realize just how amazing the piece of paper was, but discovering the other fragments was going to be a daunting task. The Guardian was impressed with Wenyu's ability to take out an ancient demon. Such an accomplishment allowed him to give the human a serial number that would rank him among all humans. He was given the number two, which could only mean there was a human before him. He wondered what kind of monster the human was to progress so far, so fast. But more importantly, what kind of benefits would he gain from having a serial number? The Guardian broke down the system into its individual parts. The serial number is your identification on the leaderboards created by the Lord. To obtain a ranking means you're among the most talented humans in the world. And for the benefits you speak of, having a serial number means you'll be able to receive support from the Guardians of the Treasure Lands. With that, when you activated his piece of paper, the fragment broke down and tied themselves to his golden storage ring. When you took being on the leaderboards and having a serial number as the equivalent of having his own special hack when entering a treasure trove. Challenger has successfully cleared the last level, activating teleportation. Teleportation complete. When you had cleaned up, even after using up most of his F-rank protective jade, he exited with two life-saving items. The enhanced storage ring and the teleportation scroll. He wasn't even given time to relish in his success before the brothers interrupted him. The group was polite as can be, with giant smiles spreading across their face. They hoped this new big brother would be willing to join them on their journey. When you couldn't understand why this group was still around, he was sure they were intending to jump him as soon as they all exited the treasure trove. The group of brothers had no shame. They were willing to bend their knees completely to the ground in an attempt to sway him to their side. But when you had no use for the weaklings that brought him zero benefits. After witnessing their skills on the inside, he knew he had nothing to worry about. If they chose to cause him any trouble, he would simply take them out as soon as they exited the treasure trove. The younger brother with anger issues wasn't interested in belittling himself. He threatened that one day their group would surpass him in strength, and when that day comes, they will show him no mercy. The others quickly silenced their immature little brother. Since it was clear that when you was unwilling to accept them, the group bid the survivor farewell and headed out of the treasure trove. As the four brothers exited the portal, an immense presence lay in wait. The youngest brother wasn't interested in taking the losses lying down. In his opinion, the four of them could easily take the bastard if they caught him unaware. But the one-eyed mutant beat him to the punch, slamming the aggressive brother into the ground. As his brother stared on in shock, when you made his entrance back into the world, in the distance his old foe was easily dealing with his enemies. The mutant dog was the last thing he ever expected to be waiting for him upon his exit. The beast lost all interest in the brothers the moment his eye landed on Wen Yu. He quickly sent the brothers flying as he rushed toward his enemy. The persistent beast was leaving Wen Yu with no choice but to dispose of it once and for all. The fearsome one-eyed foe dived in head first, only to be left with a fatal wound triggering his S-rank skill, survival instinct. When Yu was seriously getting tired of this mutt, he knew the battle to end this beast would bring him too close to his own death than he would ever be comfortable with. He dived head first into the challenge that would not only test his limits, but the beast's S-rank skill as well. The first attacks came in so fast, and so hard that it sent both of them careening in opposite directions. When Yu slammed into a pole and the beast tumbled across the ground. When Yu couldn't believe what he was witnessing. 
the mud had power through his soul attack like it was nothing. While he was a little more hesitant of charging in at full power, he had no idea why the pup was choosing to retreat from battle. There was no way his single attack had traumatized the one-eyed beast. Seeing as how one eye was choosing not to fight, he had better things to do with his time. The next time they ran into each other would truly be the last time. His priority had always been to gain strength. So he would rush to the closest exchange pillar and ascend to the second level. But as he was retreating from the scene, he heard an ominous sound that couldn't be ignored. As he examined his surroundings, the first thing that caught his attention was the mutant dog running for its life. As he was thinking, something was just not right, the cause of the commotion came into full view. Simba was on a rampage, and the mutt was leading it straight towards him. The demonic lion was in full kill mode, using his laser beams to scorch the earth. When you only barely made it out of the path of destruction, wondering how the two of them had attracted the attention of the king of the park. His only hope for survival was to make it to the exchange pillar and retreat into the ascension trials. As he rushed towards the tower, he shouted the commands needed to take him from this place. If he had been any slower, Simba would have wiped him from this earth. He truly felt bad for the pup, but it was a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. Either way, it wasn't his problem now. He laid back, taking his first breather since dropping out of the treasure trove. The sprint for his life was way too close for Winnie's liking. He was only thankful that the ascension trials had turned out to be the same as in his past life. He had been transported to a private space that could not be disturbed by any means. He knew this was only a temporary reprieve, as Simba would be waiting the moment he exited. A fearsome beast surrounded by clouds and wrapped in lightning emerged into his private space. The ascension trials will begin soon. The beast looked so much more fearsome the second time around. The boss he would be facing was none other than a rabbit. Since the challenger is in the human rankings, please complete the trial within three minutes. If you fail, you won't be able to participate in the ascension trial again for ten days, and you will be removed from the human rankings. When you wasn't prepared for a time limit, but he had no choice but to make do with this situation. Lucky for him, the bunny wasn't the patient type. If the battle progressed as quickly as he expected, three minutes would be more than enough time. He knew from his past life that the ascension trials were always out to get you. So, there was no point in wasting time. He needed to finish this as soon as possible. The bunny may look like an ordinary rabbit, but the creature had two skills that it would use to decimate its opponents. It shot past when you, demonstrating its great speed to set itself up to use its first ability. D-rank skill, Ice Arrows. It had placed itself up on a wall and away from danger to launch an arrow toward its enemy. Having such an impatient boss suited him fine, his past knowledge was enough to get him through this in a flash. As he rushed towards his enemy, the rabbit wasted no time using its second skill, allowing Wen Yu an easy opportunity to finish this quickly. He carried all his momentum into a strike directly into the rabbit's back. Congratulations. Challenge successful. A smile spread across Wen Yu's lips as the ascension process began. A blue energy swirled around his body as his soul pet shot out, roaring its delight. He watched on, surprised at how easily he had ascended to the second level. A level 2 professional's body can only be enhanced by level 2 magic crystals. The upper limit of your physical strength attribute is 50. You can now exchange level 1 magical crystals for level 2 magical crystals at a 10 to 1 ratio. Congratulations on ascending your soul pet to level 2. Its physical strength attribute limit is increased to 50. Your soul pet has received the second skill haste. C ranked. Passive. Overall speed is increased by 10%, including movement speed, attack speed, reaction speed, and more. Challenger has unlocked the second soul realm. You may form a contract with a second soul pet. The success rate of forming a contract with a soul pet who willingly accepts the contract is 100%. But the pet may not exceed the challenger's current level. The feeling of ascending never got old and the number of rewards he received for his hidden class was astonishing. While his strength attribute had only increased by 0 
his soul pet had obtained a second skill. And now he was able to form a contract with the second soul pet. This was nothing short of a jackpot. He had gotten so caught up in the battle, and his rewards, that he had forgotten that he was hiding out from the fearsome beast, Simba. The challenger will be teleported out of this space after thirty seconds. All his joy came crashing down as he realized the predicament he was in. His ascension trial hadn't eaten up as nearly as much time as he hoped. All he could do was find a way to survive. As he was forced from the ascension space, the one-eyed mutant dog's S-rank skill forced its way into his brain. The creature's S-rank skill that allowed him to get stronger the longer he fought could be the key to both their survival. The portal ejected him out, and as he suspected, Simba was laying it to the mutant dog. His luck was terrible. The mutt stood no chance against this beast and his proximity to the battle meant he had no chance of escaping. If Simba was allowed to have his way, there would be nothing left of the mutt but ashes. The lion prepared a fire beam with all intent to finish this once and for all. But to his surprise, after roasting the spot where the mutt had once resided, the creature had managed to escape his attack and had vanished from sight. It only took him a moment to realize that his prey was being carried away by the human. When you urged the mutt to hold on, it wasn't allowed to die on him. As they retreated from danger, he reminded the pup that the two were once neighbors after all. And neighbors should always look out for one another. The mutt had flashbacks to the very first time he had met this human and the kindness he was shown. When you gave his pitch, he acknowledged that the two had been enemies from the very moment this new world had emerged. But if either of them were to survive, his innate talent and persistence would be needed to push forward. If the two formed a contract, there was a slim chance that they would make it through this. If they combined their skill and experience, the crisis would be easily overcome. If the mutt chose to lend him his strength, the days of him being astray would be over. When you had no idea if the dog even understood him. But since their time was short, he had no choice but to push forward. A purple light linked the two together until it burst outwards in all directions. Contract formed successfully. Simba had caught up, splashing the place where they stood only moments before with fire. Haste. See rank. Passive. Simba's speed was putting his new passive ability to work. Without it, he would have been long dead. He was having no luck. Everywhere he turned, Simba was there to cut him off. His aggressiveness forced Winyu to use the teleportation scroll to escape his ferocity. Being forced to use it so soon just wasn't in his plans. The lion was leaving him no choice but to forcefully activate his new pet's skill. Winyu whipped out his blade and plunged it into his side. Survival instinct activated. He had received everything he was hoping for, shooting away with immense speed. The brothers were sure if it wasn't for that bastard their youngest brother would still be alive. No matter how long it took, the group was determined to make sure their brother's murderer would follow him in death. The mutant dog's ability was everything when you needed to escape danger. With his knowledge of the surrounding area, he ran circles around the lion eventually leaving the beast in his dust. He had to immediately treat his wound or he was sure to bleed to death. He was lucky to have a potion in his possession. As the fluid poured into his mouth, he could feel it taking effect. But as his wound was extensive, he had no idea if it would be enough. But that's when he realized Solai had a healing skill that would come in handy. He reached out to grip Solai's back, activating its skill. Rapid healing. Be rank. The healing process of his wound sped up. He had no doubt this was the reason why the pup was able to survive Simba's attack. He knew he needed to find a safer place than this to fully recover. But he was just so tired, his attempts to fight off sleep only made him succumb faster. He was woken up the next day by the sounds that accompanied the early morning. To his surprise, he had fully recovered. But better than that, the limb Simba took from Solai had fully regrown. To his astonishment, the relationship between a soul master and their pet was more than a simple master-servant tie. Not only had they both recovered at the same time, but the two had built an emotional bond. The trust they had put in each other guided them through a rough night. But it was only the beginning, 
going forward the two would be entrusting their backs to each other. And eventually, Simba would die by their hands. Their moment of bonding would have to end, so why not by the hands of the incoming zombie attack? The horde of zombies that forced their way into the log cabin was unnatural, to say the least. There was no way a group as big as this could have naturally formed in such a suburban area. As the two prepared to carve their way out of the cabin, wondering why so many zombies had appeared in the first place. A noise when you hadn't heard in a while came rushing in their direction. As a giant armored truck slammed into the side of their building, crushing the group of zombies in the process. The two were shocked by the sight of such a monstrosity. As they stood on standby, waiting to see if new enemies had emerged. But the friendly chatter coming from the vehicle said otherwise. What could only be the leader waved to them, inquiring about their state. Normally when you wouldn't accept assistance. But this scenario was so intriguing, he had to see it out. He and Soli hopped aboard the truck into an instant conversation about how lucky they were to be alive. All the commotion was attracting more attention than any of them was willing to deal with so the driver was ordered to get them out of there. He immediately put his foot down, the smile that spread across his face was built off of adrenaline alone, and he gave the call for them all to sit tight. It didn't take long for him to be thankful he had accompanied them, a sight that he had only heard of was taking place before his very eyes. The group was using a fishing net to capture level zero zombies. When you was shocked that the procedure was being used so soon after the start of the apocalypse. The leader explained that back at their base, they had individuals who had zero combat experience. The zombies they collected would allow them to unlock their professions, and in the process build a stronger community. Their horde was hooked up behind the truck and would be dragged back to base. It didn't take long for the group to become interested in Soli, wondering exactly how when you came across him. He gave a one-word response of hidden profession. Nothing surprised any of them anymore. Hidden professions were something that was easily plausible in this messed up world. The group was fishing for information and seeing as how when you didn't have many secrets, he had no problem explaining how he ended up in the cabin in the woods. Without going into much detail, he attracted the attention of a mutant lion and was only able to escape its pursuit by hiding in the woods. Seeing as how he relinquished a bit of his story, he felt he could go ahead and introduce himself, and thank them for putting their necks on the line to rescue him. The leader assured him it was no problem. In times like these, you have to look out for your fellow man. His name was Sun Ray Xing. They were all from a small place nearby where a group of survivors were gathered in a safe environment. The walls of their small city came into view. The heavily fortified location was indeed a sight to see. They pulled through the gate to a crowd who had eagerly been awaiting their arrival. And the group of zombies were a welcomed sight. He explained to Winyu that before the apocalypse, he was a truck driver. After seeing countless family and friends die, he decided it was his responsibility to guide his neighbors to a safe location. Before they had run into him, they were attempting to make a trip to the city to see if the officials had brought the situation under control. But the number of zombies forced them to retreat. Since when you was from the city, he encouraged him to explain to the people the situation there. The crowd was laying their hopes on the government, hoping that when the government took control of the current situation, they will all be able to return to their former lives. When you knew his words were going to upset everyone here, most of them were very lucky to even still be alive. With what he knew of the apocalypse, there was no chance that any governments were still in operation. The first wave of demonic energy alone took out 20% of the populace. And that's not including all the animals that were turned into mutant beasts. If there were any city officials left, none of them were in any condition to do anything for the populace. And none of that took into account the horrors that the world would see in a half year's time. The truck driver got the attention of the crowd. They were all hoping for news about what the government had planned to save them. He explained that they weren't able to make it to the city because of the dangers on the road. But he introduced them to Win Yu, a survivor from the city who had recently escaped. He would be their best source of information, so he encouraged them all to listen to what their new brother had to say. He explained that unlike here, there was no semblance of a civilization left back in the city. 
when you could care less if the group believed him or not. The majority of them had no business in this new world. And he knew it wouldn't be long before they were gone, just like the world they wished to inhabit. He bluntly stated that there were no official agencies or any form of military organization coming to save them. The former trucker jumped into action, doing his best to calm down the crowd. He promised as soon as the sun came up he would head back to the city to confirm if what the new brother said was true or not. An old man insisted he be allowed to accompany them to the city, for he had full faith in the official authority's ability to handle the zombies. The trucker insisted that Uncle Sun calm down. The two could talk about arrangements in the morning. Two official-looking schemers lurked in the shadows. Their plans were slowly coming to a head and they would soon be in a position to act. As the trucker continued to argue with the crowd, when you couldn't help but notice the shady individuals in the distance. And in turn, they noticed him. They had no worries about the stranger. If he chose to interfere in their plans, they would simply dispose of him. The trucker ordered the crowd to disperse for the day, assuring them everything would be handled in the morning. He insisted that when you not take offense to the citizens of the city, they meant no ill intentions. But their reaction to him telling them the truth meant nothing to him. It wasn't like many of them would be around for long. From what he observed, he assumed the trucker had known these people his entire life. His assumptions were spot on. He had been in the process of transporting goods the day the apocalypse descended upon the earth. With all the work he had put in to save his neighbors, he had no idea if his daughter, who was studying at a university in Yanjing City, was even alive. When you reassured him if she was anything like her father, she was probably cutting her way through zombies as they spoke. The trucker asked if he could stay and protect the town while he made his run to the city the next day. When you agreed but insisted that he would be leaving as soon as he returned. He was sure the mutant lion wouldn't rest until he found them, so it was best if he didn't stay in any place too long. The trucker understood such a life and didn't judge him for it. But outside the city, things weren't entirely right. A mutant rat was out scavenging for a meal, but instead of the mutant rat partaking in a bit of veg, the plant reversed things and devoured the rat. In a back alleyway, the group of shysters were preparing the steps needed to rise as the ruling body of this town. They had no intentions of freely allowing Sun Rei Xing to rule over this place. His downfall would be none other than his precious uncle Sun. The crooked uncle was willing to do anything to ensure that the trucker's plan never succeeded. The shyster's plan was simple. All Uncle Sun had to do was light an incense the moment they left the town and everything would be taken care of. It was way past the old man's bedtime, so he headed off to get rest before his big day. The shady shyster was worried about leaving such an important task up to the senile old man. But seeing as how the shyster was none other than the official mayor of the town, he knew Uncle Sun, believed in his official status, and would back him fully. It was a pity the trucker put so much effort into keeping these people safe, and to think they would be the very ones to betray him. Even the trucker's own men were willing to betray him for nothing more than the simple promises of money, power, and women. The incense was a little something the mayor had retrieved from a treasure trove. The group headed out bright, and early the next morning with a scent trail marking their path. The old uncle had no problem covering up his treachery, for he insisted, the incense was to pray for their peace and safety on their trip. The scent was doing its job perfectly, attracting the attention of every mutant beast and zombie that came across it. The convoy was successfully closing in on the city as everyone was put on high alert. When you rested next to an open window, listening to the sounds of the city, his sole pet was the first to inform him trouble was headed their way. He had no idea why he let the trucker talk him into this but he hopped up prepared to deal with the problem. The mayor and his group of hired goons were ready to ascend to the pinnacle of this city. He wasted no time introducing himself. His name was Lian Quan and he was the mayor of Yilin Town. He was there to inform them that the officials had started rescue operations. And he was responsible for all of them. He explained to them all that Sun Rei Xing was putting his self-interest before the need of the people and using the disaster to become a king to rule over them all. The Lin Hu brothers had stepped up and contacted the authorities. 
he was sent to escort them all back to the official camps, where there was food and resources for everyone. Going forward, there would be no reason for any of them to worry about the zombies or the mutant beasts any longer. The shysters had even gone so far as to plant rabble-rousers to sway the opinion of the crowd. Without much work, they had easily taken control of the citizens. Everyone was ordered to form an orderly queue, for there were vehicles waiting to take them away. But when you had heard enough, it was time for him to make his entrance. It wasn't like he cared, but a promise was a promise. He would make sure the truckers' camp stayed safe. Because of that, none of the citizens were allowed to leave. The mayor didn't care who he was. If he meddled in their affairs, there would be trouble. When you wasn't going to argue whether the mayor's claims were true or not, he was keeping things simple. No one was allowed to leave town until morning. If the mayor had to be violent, he was willing to go there for the people. When you assured him he didn't understand the situation, but he would soon. Before any of them could move, he set Soli loose on them. He opened his attack with a stun as when you instructed him to avoid the mayor and anyone without a profession. Otherwise, he had no need to show anyone else any mercy. The pup wasted no time handing it to the group. All you could hear was their screams as they begged for mercy. It was over as quickly as it began, as none of them was capable of holding up to the onslaught. He was sure the mayor now understood the situation. When you was the one with the power here, as he walked away, he suggested that they should stay put until the trucker returned from his trip. As he headed back to his bed, a little one made sure everyone knew that Big Brother was scary. The mayor had no choice but to wait. But as things stood, he wouldn't be waiting long. As the guards sounded the alarm that the trucker was on his way back at that very moment. From the city walls, the armored truck could be seen with a dust cloud pluming up behind it as it raced across the field towards the city. The trucker was furious. Returning to his home was the only thought on his mind. There was no way he would ever leave his daughter in this world alone. The treacherous situation that led the trucker to this point occurred no earlier than a few hours ago. The convoy was only about a half an hour's time from the city, when the group was ambushed by a large horde of mutant beasts. The leading trucks had no chance. They were taken out of the equation before the trucker had a chance to give them orders. His quick thinking allowed the armored truck to make it out safely. But in the end, he was the only one to make it back to the town. When you watched as the truck slammed into the side of the city's walls, it was instantly engulfed in flames. He rushed in, determined to pull the driver out safely. As he sent the door flying, he was informed that everyone was destroyed by the horde of monsters that would soon catch up to them. When you look back to see that the group wasn't far off. At this rate, there wouldn't be enough time to secure the city. The citizens rushed for cover as the horde barreled forward, intent on destroying everything. When you wasn't too worried as he could see Soli was already busy cleaning up the mess. The pup wasted no time going after the level one mutant beasts. The number of wolves easily overwhelmed him, forcing him to activate a skill. S rank skill. Berserk rage activated. He tore through the mutants, easily ripping their heads from their body. The display allowed Winyu to get a better understanding of the S rank skill. When not threatened, it was a three times combat ability boost. Its true power only came when your life was on the line. Soli's recoverability couldn't keep up with his fighting style. Because of this, it will be the first to go when something better came along. The truck driver was impressed by the fearsome pet. But when you assured him he was more a beast of war than a simple pet. Either way, the trucker thanked him for saving his life. After collecting the magical crystal and using it to empower himself, when you updated the trucker on the town's problems, he bluntly stated that the mayor was trying to undermine his authority and relocate the citizens. And with that, it was time for him to make his exit but before he could make it through the gate, he was stopped. He trusted Wenyu's opinion and asked him if he believed what he was doing here was right. Wenyu could only answer that question if he knew the trucker's motives. Either he was doing it for himself, or he was doing it for the people. His answer would change depending on which it was. The trucker's obvious answer was for the people. Wenyu gave him two choices. The first was to lead them like he had been up until now. 
but with the losses he suffered today, there was no way he would survive more than two months. His second choice was to join the treacherous mayor's base. With this choice, everyone's chance of survival would go up, but he would lose all authority. The trucker understood and decided to make the decision that was right for the people. The trucker went right to the mayor and offered to join him for the sake of the remaining survivors. The mayor welcomed him with open arms and insisted that he call him brotherly from now on. Seeing as how their goals were always the same, they would fight together to resist this disaster. Brotherly instantly put the trucker's expertise to work inquiring if there was any chance they would be able to recruit when you. But he assured Brotherly that the young man was a wanderer and wouldn't stay anywhere for long. When Yu and Solai headed out on their journey with the intent to avoid Simba at all costs. A little ways out of town, the two reached the farmlands. It wouldn't be long before they reached the next small town. But as when Yu stared into the endless fields, he had a strange feeling. He instructed Solai to speak softly so as not to attract attention. With no other choices, they had to pass through these fields. When Yu decided to send Solai out as a tester, the pup didn't appreciate being tossed under the bus, but his master reassured him that this was the best way. If anything happened, he would easily be able to pull him out. After being wished good luck, Solai rushed forward making as much noise as possible. But there was no need for him to worry. The plant creature was ready and waiting for any form of disturbance. It instantly wrapped Solai up impeding his movement. When you couldn't believe he had sensed this level of danger, Whatever this creature was, it was easily mummifying his pet. Solai had been in the clutches of the plant long enough. As his master reassured him everything would be fine, he used one of his exclusive summoning abilities. Second Soul Realm activated. Solai vanished from the midst of the vines and emerged out of a portal well out of the range of danger. When Yu congratulated him on the successful mission, but before he could receive any attention, the creature snapped out, intent on recovering what was lost. When Yu hopped into battle mode, shortening the vines as they reached for him. His first observation is that the mutated plant had reached its limit right before reaching him, meaning its attack range was no more than ten meters. He ordered Solai to find them a gap where they could break through. There couldn't be so many that they couldn't find a way safely to the other side. As he rushed to find an exit, the creature easily captured him once again. Second Soul Realm activated. When Yu's instincts allowed him to free Solai as soon as he was caught. His second attempt at escape gained them more valuable intel. It seemed the creatures were able to freely move underground, allowing them to ambush their prey at an opportune location. Yulin Town was in serious danger. It wouldn't be long before the creatures encircled the entire town. Time was of the essence. They needed more people as quickly as possible if anyone was going to have a chance of escaping. Back at the camp, the survivors were blissfully unaware of what was headed their way. In the mayor's new camp, everyone was expected to pull their weight. This included the elderly and small children. The trucker protested the manual labor that was being forced upon the weaker citizens. The mayor insisted that this way of doing things was as fair as things could be. Anyone capable of contributing to the defensive encampment was expected to do just that. Allowing the ones who couldn't, to do what they could, made them contributing members of their society. When joining, the trucker only had one request that everyone be treated equally. He really hoped the mayor wasn't going back on his promise this early in their arrangement, as he headed off to rest for the night. As soon as he was gone, the mayor and his second hand got down to the dirty business. The trucker was pretty strong, so the mayor wanted to keep him around at least for a little longer. But with that being said, there was going to be some unfortunate accidents among the useless population of their encampment. There was no way they were going to tolerate feeding people who couldn't pull their weight. A guard rushed in, informing them that the dangerous guy with the big dog was headed to the command tent. Before the mayor had any time to prepare himself, when Yu and Solai strolled in, the mayor was excited to see that they had returned. When you wasted no time dropping the bad news into his lap, he had all intentions of leaving, but as it stood, no one would easily be able to leave the town. He explained that the entire town was surrounded by mutant plants. 
The creatures had completely encircled the camp and were slowly encroaching towards its center. It didn't matter if the mayor believed him or not. As it stood, it wouldn't be hard to validate his findings, as on his way back to the town, he had found a few encampments that had been fully invaded. The mayor understood if the survivor was here, he had to have a plan. So when you explained his plan, it was a simple one. He needed enough people to overwhelm the mutant plants so that he could rush out. The mayor was shocked that when you wanted the citizens to sacrifice themselves so he could escape. When you insisted his plans weren't for them to open the path for him, but for him to open the path for all of them, he would lead the way, taking on most of the pressure, while everyone else would follow, capturing anything he missed. For each additional person, seven mutant plants will be dispersed. More people only mean the less weight everyone will have to carry. Each person's survival will depend on two factors. Their individual combat skill and their luck. It didn't matter to him whether he was leading or following. But he figured the cannon fodder would be more accepting of his plan if he was leading from the front. The mayor respected him for his combat ability. But he was finding all of this hard to believe. The town was so big that not even zombies had managed to surround them. As if on cue the armored truck smashed into the room, covered in vines. The trucker hopped out, announcing that they were all doomed. While on his patrol, he came across a group of mutant plants that were forming a siege wall that was slowly encircling the town. They had no choice but to charge out, otherwise, all of them would die. The mayor immediately agreed to Winu's plan. All that was left was for them to discuss the details. The mayor broke down the numbers for Winu. They had around 300 people, and half had yet to change their professions, it would be no problem to use all of them as cannon fodder. The mayor sent out a call for all the core members to gather, and twenty minutes later, they were all sitting around the table. Of all the members, only the trucker disagreed with the plan. He was furious. He wasn't interested in sacrificing others for his own survival. The mayor gave him the floor. If he had a better plan, now was the time for him to share it with everyone. The mayor explained he didn't come up with the plan. It was all one use. But when the time came, he had no right to blame anyone for what was going to happen. And there was no need for him to thank them for his own survival. The trucker looked at one you. He calmly admitted it was all his doing, and that life had never been equal. For the strong to perish protecting the weak made no logical sense. When you wasn't planning on taking the blame for any of this. If the trucker wanted to blame someone, he could blame the weaklings for insisting on being weak. Or better yet, he could blame this whole crappy world for the predicament they were in. They could either all die together or move forward with the plan. As the trucker attempted to come up with ways to save the young and the old. When you cut him off and asked him a simple question. Whose life is more important, yours or other people's? The question threw the trucker off guard, as he wasn't able to give a truthful answer, so he gave none at all. With that, the mayor proceeded to conclude the meeting. They were all to spread the news that Chai He Town had been restored to its pre-apocalypse glory, and they would all be moving there. No one had a choice in this matter. If anyone refused, they were to be put down immediately. It was a regrettable decision, but it had to be done. The trucker left acknowledging that the rest of them were all cold-blooded. When you asked the mayor to keep the trucker under surveillance, if he chose to start any waves, they were to kill him immediately. The next day's plans were too important to be spoiled by one man. The mayor was taken aback. He was sure the two had a close bond. When it came to Winu's survival and his ability to move freely in this world unmolested, bonds and ties meant nothing in comparison to his life. The mayor had nothing but admiration for a man who took his life into his own hands. The only other worry when you had was the mutant plant's ability to grow stronger throughout the night. To counter this, he intended to spend his time before their escape slaughtering all the zombies and mutant beasts in the area. He inquired whether the mayor had any more of the lures he used to destroy the trucker's convoy. The mayor was shocked to find out that his treacherous plan wasn't as secretive as he believed. When you assured the mayor he knew things he couldn't possibly imagine. Seeing as how there was no need for him to keep it secret any longer, he revealed he had gotten the incense from a treasure trove. 
Since there was no way for him to bring the treasure trove with them, he invited Wen Yu to help him find any useful items that had been left behind. Wen Yu was fully on board, but he needed to make a few preparations first, for safety's sake. He stocked up at the exchange pillar, grabbing the essentials he would need to survive the possible hostile environment of a treasure trove. But more importantly, he bought a rank 2 non-attribute crystal, leaving him with 400 remaining points. As he crushed the crystals in his hand, his attributes successfully increased to 25 points. Now that he was reinforced, there was nothing stopping him from entering the treasure trove. He rushed back to the mayor ready to get down to business. The mayor had covered up the existence of the trove by building his bedroom around it. Wen Yu was impressed and ordered the mayor to enter first. The mayor laughed it off, insisting he had nothing to fear from him as he stepped into the portal. When you followed close behind, knowing in life you can never be too cautious. The trove was a giant cave formation that had three paths. At the end of each path was a treasure chest. Zombies that roamed the area were the only dangers the mayor had spotted. According to the rules of the trove, each person was allowed to open only one chest. The mayor had cleared both the middle and the left path, choosing to open the chest in the middle. When you wondered why the mayor chose not to allow his underlings to open the other two chests. But the answer was simple. He wasn't looking for any direct competition. To allow his underlings to gain something amazing would only bring him trouble. The two decided to head down the left side's path to allow Winyu to claim its treasure. The chest looked promising, so he went ahead and yanked it open, only to have a cloud of smoke burst into his face. A cackling clown toy sprung forward, startling Winyu, it insisted it was only teasing. Winyu landed a blow on the toy that sent it flying across the room. He didn't come all this way for nothing, he ordered the mayor to go out and find one of his men who could open the remaining chest. While he waited, he released Solai, the two would clear the path to the third chamber. They wasted no time slicing into the zombie guards, forcing their way toward the treasure chest. In his killing frenzy, he almost put down the mayor as he came rushing towards him. It would have been an unfortunate occurrence if when you hadn't stopped in time. Now that they had what they needed, they proceeded with revealing the final treasure. The lackey was ordered to open the chest and to pass over its contents. The final chest popped open, revealing the true treasure of the trove. The amateur was shocked. It was the first time he had ever seen a kill scroll. When you ordered him to hand it over. But as he picked it up, greed got the best of him. As he attempted to escape with the treasure, his head was quickly removed from his shoulders. When you retrieved the scroll, insisting if anyone dared steal his belongings, they were only seeking death. He yanked the scroll open revealing its contents. Intangibility. S-rank skill. Space type ability. Can temporarily allow you to phase through solid objects. Active skill. Consume energy according to the toughness of the object. The mayor was ecstatic that they had finally retrieved the treasure worthy of all his obsession. It wouldn't allow them to lure in their enemies, but it was a truly valuable object that would leave when you owing the mayor a favor. Before they headed out, when you inquired whether the lackey he had just beheaded had any family to worry about, it turned out he had a little brother who hadn't bothered to change his profession. Not willing to take any chances when you ordered the little brother to be disposed of immediately. With everything taken care of, they both headed out to rest until the start of the operation. Not long after kicking his feet up, when you sent someone at the flap of his tent, it turned out to be a beautiful woman there to deliver his meal. She introduced herself as by Fei Fei, apologizing for disturbing him. When you waved it off, insisting she just leaves the meal on the table. She did as she was instructed, and seductively sashayed across the room towards him. When you set up not interested in what she was selling. But she had a deal to propose. She knew the plans for the next day and wished for her younger brother to survive the encounter. She was willing to trade herself in exchange for her brother's survival. When you had zero confidence in his own ability to escape the mutant plants, there was no way he would be dragging a burden along with him. He wasted no time rejecting her deal, causing her to drop to her knees and beg for his assistance. He called forth Solai to escort her out of his room. 
Solai chased the damsel away, looking as frightening as he could. If Wenyu's willpower wasn't strong enough, he would have easily fallen into a needless trap. Now wasn't the time to waste energy on useless pleasure, he would need it all to survive the trial that awaited. The next day, the officials gather everyone from the town in front of the forest and explain clearly what was going on. The town had been surrounded by a fearsome mutant plant that was slowly encroaching towards them. The only way for any of them to survive was if they all charged out in mass and head for the safety of Chai He Town. The bluntness of the announcement only caused people in the crowd to panic. And as if it was scripted, a plant shot out of cover and snatched up a professional dragging him back into the woods. The mutant plant was progressing faster than when you could have anticipated. Their time was running short. If they didn't get moving, they would all be doomed. The attack caused the citizens to panic, but luckily the mayor was there to rein them all in. Being short on time, he gave them a choice. The ones who wanted to stay behind were to stand on the right, and the ones who wanted to charge out would stand on the left. There were only shouts of dissent from the crowd. They had all just witnessed the professional getting snatched up and pulled away. A normal person wouldn't have any chance of surviving this. The most vocal individuals decided to stay behind and find their own way to survive. The mayor's man stepped forward and dealt with the first person who decided to step to the right side. As the realization of their situation sank in, the mayor hopped down from the truck and rushed to the group. He informed them they had the right to stay behind, but if they did he would be killing anyone who made that decision. So, he asked again, who here wanted to stay behind? Everyone understood clearly and there were no objections to the plan to charge out. With that, everyone loaded up onto the trucks and headed to the farmlands. The mutant plants gathered together staying out of the sight of the humans. As they reached the fields, when you warned the mayor that the blockades were up ahead, and they should put everyone on alert. He made the announcement that they were reaching the location where they would charge forward on foot. Something was off, the last time the plants had attacked well before he had reached this point. And as if on cue, a wall of plants shot up surrounding the survivors. The plants were only getting smarter. They waited until their prey had no chance of escaping before showing themselves. As soon as the action started, when you jumped into action, hurdling over everything in his path, as he and Solai prepared to make their escape attempt. All around them, they could hear people begging for help. The mutant plan had been delivered a feast, allowing the two a small window of opportunity, which they used to make their escape attempt. Just because it had plenty of targets didn't mean the plant was going to let the two off easy. The vine shot forward missing when you by inches, only to wrap around Solai in the process. When you screamed second soul realm, activate. Releasing Solai and allowing the two to make it to safety. If it wasn't for all the survivors who helped out, there was a high chance they would have died here. Back in the midst of the battlefield, the trucker did all he could to increase the number of survivors. But no matter how hard he strived, there was still someone who needed to be saved. The mayor was there as the damsel and her little brother were being dragged under. He snatched up the little brother and ordered Fei Fei to stay close. No matter what, she needed to stay in his shadow. He casted his A-rank skills shadow clone, and the group rushed for safety. When Yu and Solai sat overlooking the fields, wondering how many would make it out safely, a rustling nearby attracted his attention. He turned towards the shrubs, where three sets of eyes peered out, to which he had no idea if they were friend or foe. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you support the original creators. Supporting their work will allow us to continue to get amazing chapters in the series. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.